What's up fam and welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time on the channel, what's up fam? Welcome to the channel. On this channel, this is where you'll find tips and tricks on how to improve your workflow, whether that's making beats on the go or just making beats on your iPad on everyday use. And every now and again, I'll throw some tech recommendations in there too. So be on the lookout for that. And if that sounds like something that you're interested in, consider hitting that subscribe button. And right now we're gonna get into today's video. And the number one thing that keeps coming up every time you guys reach out to me is that, yo B, I've been watching your tutorials, I've been applying the things that you've been teaching, but my beats still don't sound like yours. That's just cause you ain't me fam. But no, no, seriously. Today I wanna start a new conversation about a new part of the series building better beats in Beatmaker 3. We're gonna start talking about some advanced MIDI editing tips, pro tips, tips that you can use in your everyday workflow for making beats in Beatmaker 3 or in any other DAW so that your beats don't sound like garbage. No, so that your beats don't sound so robotic and so soulless. So it actually sounds like you're putting effort and you're actually putting work into your beats. Instead of just mindlessly tapping on stuff and it just sounds like a bunch of chaos. Or it just doesn't have that vibe, it doesn't have that bounce, it doesn't have that feel, it doesn't have that you. So let's get into today's video on one of the things that you can do to start making your beats sound a little bit better using some advanced MIDI editing techniques. Okay, so one of the most common things that I'm noticing that you guys are doing, especially when you don't have a MIDI controller, is you're leaving your velocity, you're leaving your velocity levels at the same level for every single note that you play. Not only for every single note that you play, but for every single instrument too. Everything does not have to hit hard all the time. So we're gonna take a look at this section over here in the uh, left-hand corner, and this is the fixed velocity level. So because a lot of you either don't own a MIDI device or can't get access to one all the time, your default way of creating is the iPad itself. So you're tapping on it. And there's not really a way to change velocities by just tapping softly. It doesn't matter how hard or softly you tap on the iPad, it will always give you the same velocity unless you change it over here. There are some things that you can do after the fact, after you've recorded your beat. So what we're gonna do is mute these parts and then let's record on that track. All right, so we got our loop. So we know that we can go in and edit the, uh, we know we can go in and edit the notes in the note placement. So we know that we can go in and edit those notes and the note placement of those MIDI controls that we just typed in. However, we have some additional MIDI information that we can tweak as well. After it's all said and done, after it's all played, we're going to go into our song, go into our pattern, just like we would when we are editing the notes. We can go in and add it the, pa the pattern MIDI information. You can see here that all those notes played at the same velocity. So what we can do here is make sure note velocity is highlighted. We're in the pattern MIDI tab right here. You got pattern automations 
and we're in the pattern window we got pattern automations and you got pattern MIDI information so we can go in and, and tweak each aspect of that MIDI information that was already pre-recorded so we can go in and change the velocity go ahead and select our MIDI note and bring that down select that MIDI note And like I said, every every note does not have to hit really hard. And some instruments even play a little bit differently. So you get a little different different little vibe when you play play it at a softer velocity. Watch these two. So, so you can see some of those notes play higher, some of those notes play lower. And that gives the beat a little bit more life and it doesn't sound so robotic and it doesn't sound like you were tapping on a screen. So that when you start adding your other instruments in, So that when you start adding your other instruments in, it doesn't sound so absolute. It has a little bit more feeling, it has a little bit more texture, and it has a lot more expression to it. As opposed to just tapping one velocity throughout the whole beat, you have a little bit more dynamic to how those how those uh, drums are played, even notes, um, melodies, and stuff like that. So. So if you're just limited to tapping on the iPad screen or or you can't get to your MIDI controller just yet so that you can give a little bit more expression on those pads and stuff like that, don't be afraid to go in and edit those notes. Like I said, it actually brings a lot more texture and a lot more feeling into that vibe that you're looking for. And I know to some of you, some of this stuff might seem a little bit elementary, but there are a lot of new family members who are just now getting into Beatmaker 3 and beat making period. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight on how to get better beats when you're making beats on these iPads. So once again, like I said, we'll be talking about different ways that we can use advanced MIDI editing tips to improve your beats and get you to start making better beats in Beatmaker 3. You feel me? All right. So if this was helpful to you, go ahead and hit the hit the comment section. Go ahead and drop me a comment, hit the like button. And remember, if I can create like this, you could create like this. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And, and for those of you who have been looking for ways to support the channel, check out my website at brandonrico.com. I have some merch there, some t-shirts and stuff that you can buy. I have some links to my beats there. And I also have some stuff coming up for you guys, some free downloads, as well as some sound packs and stuff that I might be selling pretty soon. Also, whenever I go live, you can also watch me live from that page, from brandonrico.com. You can watch me live. And there are also links for you guys to uh, send me donations and tips if you guys want to. You don't have to still love you anyway, <laughs> but tips and donations are appreciated. It definitely will help the channel so that I can keep doing videos like these. And, and I also have some links to my Patreon and some other memberships for you guys that I'll be coming up with some content for, some exclusive content just for you guys. Thank you guys for rocking with me. Thanks for rocking with the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.